Hi, and welcome back to the Save It For Parts Planet, I mean channel. If you're visiting an alien world, whether it be through a stargate, a transporter, or other means, you'll need some kind of sensor device to check for energy signatures, alien life forms, and anything else interesting. That's why I've come up with version 2 of the Save It For Parts handheld scanner. This is based on a Raspberry Pi computer, which runs the display here. And then I've also got a RTL SDR software-defined radio for picking up strange radio signals, showing the local RF spectrum, and listening in on alien communications. I also have a small thermal imager in the top here so I can find heat signatures and local wildlife. Make sure to check out part one of this video as well, and you can look up here for the link to that. In part one, it was not quite this polished, but you can see some of the earlier steps that I did to get some of these pieces working with the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you saw my last video, I meant to install some other sensors in this device, such as local atmospheric temperature and pressure sensors. However, I had a little trouble with those, so unfortunately, they're not working right now. However, we can jump right into the video on how I've done this, and you can see some of the things that I did to fit all this gear into this little waterproof case. Alrighty, it seems like the cargo ship has docked because suddenly all of my international orders from the last month or two are here at once. Now, I guess this is what happens when you order all the stuff on eBay that's like $1.72 with free shipping, and it says it'll arrive sometime between June and October. It just shows up when it shows up, so I might have a whopping $10 worth of swag here. I don't normally do unboxing videos, but I don't remember what any of this is, so let's uh, start opening it up and see what we got. Now before we try to pack all this stuff into the waterproof case, I want to wire up some of these sensors and hook up the new screen and just make sure everything works on the tabletop before we move on to making it a handheld unit. Alright, so this is another Adafruit TFT screen. It's about the same as the first one that I had, but this is the 3.5 inch version, so hopefully it's a little more readable. Alright, here we have our little environmental condition sensor and this is supposed to do both temperature and relative humidity. Well, so far I'm having no luck with this little temperature humidity sensor. I'm just getting a failure and a message to check my wiring. I've actually moved my wires around a little bit. Um, the one guide that I found told me to hook it up to the 5 volt power supply but another guide says to hook it to the three volt pin. So I hooked it to five first. Hopefully I didn't wreck anything by doing that, but uh, it doesn't seem to be working with three volts in either. All right, I'm gonna try a different library and a different input pin for the data from that little temperature sensor. And that's not working either. So either I've wrecked this little sensor or it was bad to start with because it is not working on multiple GPIO pins. It's not working with 3 volts, it's not working with 5 volts. So I'm gonna set that aside and do something else. So if I want to fit this into this box and still have the screen in a horizontal orientation, then I gotta get rid of all the USB dongles sticking out the side here. So I've taken a USB extension cable and broken the tip so I can plug it in sideways in extremely low profile and then I'm hoping that this little USB hub will let me plug in all of the dongles and USB accessories elsewhere in the case without having them stick straight out the side. I might have to do something a little better with this so that those pins aren't exposed but let's go ahead and see if that works. Well, I've already ruined the pins on that one, but fortunately I found a bunch of these USB extension cables in the trash, so I can ruin these all day. 
All right, I've made a sideways redneck USB adapter that goes over to my hub and the keyboard is still working and my little SDR is still working. So that is looking promising. All right, we're gonna see if we can get this USB sound card working. And this looks like the online guide, so that's always a plus that I might be doing something correct. Wednesday, partly cloudy. A 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Now I've got to try to pack all of this stuff into my waterproof case, along with a battery. And so we're going to see how that goes. So now I'm basically taking apart this little antenna that came with the RTL SDR and I'm going to try to hack it into my sensor device case and shorten up this cable because I don't need four feet of cable inside the case. All right, I've got my cat detector running. It's only mildly accurate, but uh, does show his body heat. And I've got my RF spectrum analyzer running. Um, unfortunately, this case came with some lines in the clear lid, which weren't super obvious when I ordered it, so it does interfere with the display a little bit, but uh, it's not the worst. You can still see the central frequency display here. I've got this really thin battery pack. It kind of fits in the back half of this case, but it doesn't have much capacity in it, so it only really runs the thing for a little bit at a time. I might need to find another battery pack that'll fit in this extra space in the back of the case. Now I could run both of these sensors at the same time if I wanted to, but I think that's going to make the processor overheat on this little unit. And since it's inside a case, I don't really need extra heat going on. I bet I could slap a silly name on this thing and sell it to some ghost hunters. Those guys will buy anything if it sounds scientific enough. Alright, that's about it for this video. So thanks for watching, and until next time, this has been the Save It For Parts channel.